If you're watching this, something tells me you're going to understand the following analogy. Go to your local ordinary pizza joint, order a large pizza, they cut it in eight slices. Go to Costco, more of like a pizza byproduct, they cut the same size pizza into like 16 or 24 slices. That's kind of happening in the crossover world. And our job today is, are we cutting up the pie a bit too much at this point? Yes, a new car, but the same engine. We've driven in many other Hyundai Kia products, and this is one of their best engines. Actually, it's one of my favorites from the Hyundai Kia group in here. You know what's interesting about this? It's not so much that it delivers power well. It delivers power incredibly well, especially considering the size. This is a tall vehicle, probably not the most aerodynamic. No matter the car we get in, I look at the EPA numbers, and it's virtually no difference between the regular lower end uh, gas, no turbo engine, and this turbo engine. But you get in like a, a Ford EcoBoost something or other, the turbocharger is like an atom bomb on the fuel economy. In every application I have driven for a week or more of this engine, the fuel economy has been as good if not better than what the EPA has been telling me. Even non-car folk are well aware of how cars are marketed nowadays. There are multiple levels. There's the cheap seats, there's the middle of the road, and then there's super flash, which this one kind of is in the Kia Seltos world. But the rest of the Kia Seltos world, there's kind of an upheaval in that the cheapest one is, is not the worst one. Yeah, it doesn't have an engine as good as this one. This is the 1.6 turbo. That's a two liter four cylinder with less horsepower. But uh, the basic one has the same independent rear suspension as this one. Yeah, there's less stuff, but it has the same fancy suspension. But then the one above that, supposedly that's more fancy, goes to a crappy torsion beam suspension. And I just don't get that. I, I don't understand why this is not the cheapest crossover that Kia makes. So why would they put the crappiest suspension in like one level up? My suggestion, make them all independent rear, even the front drive only model. I think that would be a better way to go. Ride quality around town is surprisingly good here. I would argue it's, it's a little bit higher on the driving dynamic spectrum, especially considering the car that it is. Now, that being the case, it is a function of the, ooh, here we go. Oh, that was a bit aggressive. It is a function of the Hyundai Kia parts bin because generally what they do when they pair this engine with a suspension setup, it's usually with the independent setup. And what's forcing that here is the all-wheel drive system but I would argue it absolutely translates to better ride quality because what's happening is the driving dynamics are significantly improved and that's a big function of Albert Biermer here even though this ain't a Veloster N. Uh, but ultimately it's overall blessed with more composure which makes it better ride quality. Not my favorite place to be, so let's dispense with this quickly. That's where I, a six-footer, would sit. And surprisingly, I have a lot of knee room here. You also have a little bit of stadium seating here. You sit a little far up, which is pretty neat. I don't think the seat goes back at all. Let's try this. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of recline. That's neat. Uh, and then there is an armrest with a cup holder. And then for the rug rats, uh, they can take their devices and they can charge with an old school USB plug here. And for the avoidance of doubt, that is just a charge plug. Uh, it does not connect the device to the audio system of the vehicle. What you and I are about to do is not for overall brake performance, rather pedal feel. With that, here we go. And that's 40. Stop. Oh, um, actually the brake performance is pretty good. Didn't expect it to be that good. Uh, the pedal feel is, it's a little odd. So at higher speeds, the pedal modulation, it's, it's not ideal. At lower speeds, the pedal modulation is a little bit better. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game in mind, the options game with today's contestant, the 2021, yes, I said 2021, Kia Seltos. I believe that name has something to do with Greek gods or Greek mythology, something like that. As someone with 100% Greek heritage, Fgadi Stoh, uh, SX Turbo all-wheel drive, 
Now, before we dive into this, I do need to say this is not the first time we are playing around of the options game with this vehicle. More on that later. First, the MSRP, $27,890. To that, we add star bright yellow. Not something I would choose. That also adds a two-tone black roof for $345. But there's another problem with that, and, and here it is. If you choose this color combo, Kia says you can't have a sunroof. What mustard yellow and a black roof have to do with not having a sunroof? I don't know, because there is a sunroof on offer in all the other colors, and it's a good one. Can we fix this? Now let's press on to floor mats, $130. And that is the only two factory options. And yes, I'm kind of sandbagging here because it's a Kia, which means it's from the Hyundai Kia Group, which means this up-level one, it's got a lot of stuff in it already. Uh, for example, a wireless charger, it's got, I was really surprised by a power seat, and kind of a funky Bose stereo system. That's all fitted as standard in this up-level SX Turbo. But then, there has been a trend we've seen as of late. The, the freight, they're all going up. I do not know why they are doing this. Uh, the highest was that Ford GT, 3,500 bucks from Canada. This one is at least the bargain because it's coming from Korea for only $1,120. To that, we add nothing else, which means the full retail price is $29,485. That's it. Uh, somewhat serious here, you guys may remember, I had a traumatic experience in January, and our friend, Roman Micah, guy who runs TFL Car, called me at the hospital and unsolicited said, hey man, I wanna help you out. The guys and I wanna do some episodes for you. And I was supposed to go on this drive with Roman in San Antonio, Texas to drive this vehicle. And sure enough, Roman and Tommy did the episode, and Roman, he actually took a stab at playing the options game with this vehicle. and. I was really touched by that. And then uh, they did another episode with the Corvette, and then Nathan did a great episode and a great round of the options game, probably better than me actually, with a Honda CRV hybrid. So yeah, there's still a long recovery ahead and I'm starting to ramp up here, but it's just great to know that I'm moving forward with great friends like that. Earlier in this episode, I shared with you my admiration for this engine within the Hyundai Kia Group engine lineup. And it's not just the engine, I kind of sandbagged you there, it's the transmission as well. It's a seven speed dual clutch that's designed, built and engineered by Hyundai Kia in-house. And I don't believe it's just the computer programming that's going on here. I think it's a combination of the computer programming, the cogs themselves, because what it in effect does it takes a very small engine and it widens out the power band. So there's usable power from low RPMs. Like right now I'm below 2000 RPM. I can hit the gas and downshifts very quickly and get some power in a car that's tall. It has a high center of gravity. It's not the most aerodynamic. There is a manual shift option. You have to pull it over to the side uh, and then it's either up or down from here. There are no paddles on the steering wheel. Need to take my hat off to the Kia design folks because they have pulled off a magic trick that is virtually undetectable to the civilian untrained car shopper eye or whoever would buy these things. You see, this is what we would call a busy design. There are a lot of lines going all over the places, two-tone body cladding, a lot of lighting, especially at the front. And then there's these unique details like the roof rails at the top. They stick out towards the rear, not because of function, but to work in conjunction with all the other details to hide the mass of this vehicle. When you look at this thing in pictures, you think it's small, but you come up to this thing in person. First time I came up to it, I'm like, wow, this is much bigger than I thought, to the point where you almost don't think it shares a platform that it does with the Hyundai Kona and the Hyundai Creta, Creta, what they sell in India. And then you start scratching your head. You're like, hey man, what does this thing compete with? Now, if you speak to Kia, they'll tell you it's the Honda HRV, the Chevy Trax, and the Nissan Rogue Sport. All terrible choices in comparison. That said, its biggest problem, Mazda CX-30. You know what? Rather than me and go on here, if you had to choose between this or a Mazda CX-30, which would you choose and why? Let me know in the comments below.
A couple of random notes. Uh, number one, there is a fair share of hard plastic in here. I've come to expect a bit better from Hyundai Kia. Like here, very good. Here, very bad. The Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration, again, like all Hyundai Kia, works incredibly well. Although I have to admit I've become a bit spoiled now with all the BMWs that have the wireless CarPlay and you get you get kind of lazy. You don't want to plug the thing anymore. But I will say the downside of that is the phone gets very hot to the point, at least with my iPhone XS on Verizon, uh, it impacts the call quality. It makes the phone sometimes not want to work and not place calls. So I'm not mad about not having the connection in terms of wirelessly. So the, this wired connection works okay, but the thing that's so strange is you have both the wired as well as the Qi wireless charger, and it's on right now while my phone is being charged by the cord, which, how's it being charged? That's confusing to me, and I don't know, maybe it overcharges the phone. <laughs> and then last but not least, uh, it's all about moods in this thing. So they have two features that they do here. The speakers, I can't put on music here, can't get it cleared for you. But if I were to blare the music and set up uh, the light show, there is a light show like we saw in the Soul, where the speaker grills and some of the LED lights throughout the dash will reverberate with the music. And then if you don't want music, it's got this mood thing here where you can play uh, sounds like white noise kind of stuff. Here I have an open air cafe, and there's a warm fireplace, and there's a snowy village, and there's a lively forest as we're going through one. It's entirely possible that I am ridiculously biased to the Kia Soul EV, to the point that I would argue it is the most fun to drive city cars, sorta of small crossover like this, where it answers the question we posed at the top of the episode. Yes, the pizza, it's now being sliced too small, too thin, whatever you want to call it. And there's an additional problem here. This plenty good vehicle, but we learned in this episode, it's $30,000. For two grand more, one can have a Lexus UX. Just saying. So, you know, put another way, me, as much as I love going to Costco, I'm going to get in my Kia Soul EV and I'm going to go to my neighborhood pizza joint.